Cobweb had so much potential. This film could have been amazing. It could have been one of my favourite films of this year. It's a really great premise. We have some great acting and some really good moments. But unfortunately, it let itself down in a big way. I will begin without any spoilers, but then I will give a spoiler warning when I go into some more detail. This film was released this year in 2023. It's directed by Samuel Bowden, written by Chris Thomas Devlin. And it stars Woody Norman as a little boy called Peter. And Peter lives with his parents and he hears noises, knocking, coming from the wall in his bedroom. And he's not allowed to talk about it. His parents are... His parents don't come across as strict in general, but when it comes to this, it's made very clear that Peter is not to mention it. He's not to ask his teacher for help. He's not allowed to even hint that there's something wrong. And there's this big mystery of trying to work out what it is and what his parents are not quite getting into because there's something that they're not saying, but it's hanging in the air. And that part of the mystery, to begin with, I was really fascinated by. I have to say that Woody Norman gave an amazing performance. This film really relied on Peter being a likeable character and, of course, with a good performance because he's very much at the heart of the story. And I'm so pleased to say that absolutely, yes, I enjoyed watching Peter's story. I thought the performance was brilliant. However... Once we started to unravel the threads and get a little bit more information, it started to become less interesting. I'll go into more detail about that in a moment. And I feel like actually there's a turning point in the film. It peaks. It really peaks at one point. For me, there's a clear point where things were just incredible. And I loved it. And I loved the atmosphere. And from that point, it just went downhill really, really quickly. But up until that point, it was a steady build. It was going in the right direction at a pretty steady pace, quite atmospheric, not very scary. It felt quite tense, or I guess I felt tense. And I always felt like there was something going to happen. And I liked that. I liked that part of it. But once things started to happen, it kind of uh, lost it a little bit. But in general... I think it, it was an okay film. It could have been an amazing film, but there is a reason why it wasn't. Would I recommend it before I go in with the spoilers? If you're a horror fan, or if you like dark mysteries, I'd say give it a go. It's not terrible, but I do feel very let down because the first half of the film, maybe a little bit longer than the first half, maybe the first two thirds, definitely seemed to be going in the right direction. It was very promising. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And then, as I'll discuss in a moment, it let itself down, but not so much that I don't want to recommend the film. It's good, but it's not as good as it could have been. So it's worth checking out if it sounds like your kind of film. So big, big spoilers from now, as I'm going to discuss, first of all, very briefly, The Peak. The point at which I thought, this is brilliant, I love it, let's see what the ending has in store, and then it fell apart. So big spoilers from now. And the point at which it peaked for me, everything was just going up and up, up until this point. It was getting better and better, the atmosphere was getting stronger, and it was just so delightful, really thrilling. And the point that I loved for me, this is when the film peaked, is when the parents, particularly the father, the scene with the father, when he started vomiting all of that blood. There was just something unnerving about it. It was quite suspenseful. And I just, at that point, thought, yeah, this is my kind of film. I really love it. It's unpredictable. It's very chaotic with the characters' performances, the, the way the characters were behaving, particularly the parents. I never knew one minute from the next what the parents were going to do, particularly the mother. The mother was very unpredictable. And I like that. It made for a very interesting experience. The father is a character I loved to hate because I thought he brought a lot of fear to it and it worked really well. The parents are, are played by Anthony Starr and, and Lizzie Kaplan. And that point when the father vomited, 
that's the peak for me. And after that, it very, very, very quickly went downhill. A good chunk after that is filmed in almost total darkness. And this is something I have a problem with. Some horror films think that if you just turn the lights off, it's going to be scary. That's not how it works. There, there can be times when that works well if you have other factors to you know keep the narrative interesting. But it was just dark. <laughs> it wasn't atmospheric. It was just very dimly lit. And I found that to be really boring. We brought some other characters in towards the end and it just felt really unnecessary. In fact, the, the boys that went into the house... They, they didn't need to be there. There was no point to that. There was no purpose. It didn't move anything forward. I didn't get any joy out of it. It certainly wasn't scary. Completely unnecessary. The teacher, however, uh, Miss Devine, played by Cleopatra Coleman, yeah, I think having her in it at that point worked quite well. That was a pretty good decision. And then we meet, well, this character, the girl behind the wall. And I'll be honest... There was a moment where I thought, oh, I probably should have realised that. Because it was it was just before, just before Peter went through the wall to find his sister that I realised, that's not just a sweet little girl. That's not an innocent child. That's a sinister monster. And it was just before that was revealed that I realised it. Maybe to other people that was obvious, but to me it wasn't. To me the threat was the parents, whereas I see now the parents were maybe in theory trying to protect him from that, even though they were doing it in a very terrible way and their attitudes towards this child are obviously awful as well. But in that moment, I did like the fact that it made me question everything I believed throughout the film. Because I'll be honest, I believed. I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting, but I believed that the girl he was hearing was a was a spirit, was not a, a living girl, and that his parents had maybe, I don't know, killed the child or something. And th that's what she was doing, coming back to torment the parents through through Peter, not the story that we got. So credit where it's due, that part was unexpected. But that was a, a very fleeting couple of minutes and then things went downhill again and I just didn't care for the ending at all. It was a very poor, very weak, very rushed ending. It definitely felt very rushed. It was kind of like, okay, parents are dead, let's spend five minutes bringing in these other boys because we don't know what else to do here. And that was really boring. And then the teacher came in, the, the, the girl explained who she was and why she was locked away, and then we ended it. And it was just a huge letdown. I feel like the last 20 minutes of the film, but I don't know if it was exactly 20 minutes, but basically from the point after the parents are vomiting their insides out, after that point, it's kind of like it was written and directed by somebody else. The quality does not match the rest of the film. And the only good bit in that ending is the reveal. And as I said, maybe other people had worked it out already and I didn't. But I like that I hadn't worked it out already because it meant that there was still an element of suspense there, even if the rest of the ending was falling apart. So it's not an amazing film. I'd say two-thirds of it, give or take, are really good. The ending is not the same quality as the rest of the film, but it didn't hinder my enjoyment. You know, sometimes you can get to the end of a film and the ending can be so bad that it ruins the rest of the film. But that's not the case here. I still really enjoyed the rest of it and I do recommend it. I mean, I hope you've seen it at this point as I have just ruined the ending. But in general, I I'm happy to recommend Cobweb. I don't I absolutely don't regret having watched it. I did like it. It's not as good as I'd hoped. It could have been better. I do think the ending was very, very weak. But aside from that, it's really not a bad film. We have some great performances. It's generally very atmospheric. I don't think I'd ever watch it again. If there were to be a sequel, though, or you know, a spin-off or a prequel or anything like that, yeah. I'd watch it. I'd be keen to see more from this little cobweb universe, as it were. And ultimately, I didn't think it was too bad. Generally, I enjoyed watching it. <laughs>